Uh, so can you give us the benefits of how this has helped you personally? Gosh, I have to, the first word that came to my mind was really revolutionary optimism. I think I that, love that that's really like, I, I say it to my comrades, revolutionary optimism saved me. I think that I was somebody that was really disenchanted, as I said, and I'll share personally, while I was running that restaurant, I was homeless as well. I lived out of my car. So it was very, it's one of those things that I remember being in that position and being like, if I ever get out of here, because I was devoid of community, which is what ended up really expediting my situation to homelessness. Mm -hmm. I really didn't have any form of support community or anything like that. So it ended up being a very lonely time in my life. So um, to say the least, like community saved me to be able to be in a space where we are intentionally holding care yeah. for our most disenfranchised. It was, I remember being on the other side and mm. just wishing uh, there was a PFK out there for me. <laughs> Welcome to the JB Font channel. I am your host, James Fontleroy. So good to see all of you here. The JB Font channel is available on all major podcast platforms. So go ahead and subscribe there. Also part of Revolutionary Blackout Network. So you can find me there on Sundays and Thursdays. If you guys have not already, you guys can also go to my Substack. You guys can go there at jbfont.substack.com. So you guys are aware of email notifications as well as whenever I go live or write any articles, you guys can go there. Thank you so very much to everyone. Please make sure to give a like that pushes me out into the algorithm. Thank you so very much. I am here right now with Layla from the People's Free Kitchen. Good to see you. How are you doing today? Good. And I'll- Lila. Lila. Yes. My fault. I got this, you. Uh, see, this is why I don't <laughs> listen as intently as I should. So- I'll say that. You yeah. Know, it's honestly been an honor to have that we just finished out our first cooking shift together. So yes. it's an honor that you took the time to be with us today. And we're really appreciative that you're giving us the time. Thank you so very much. And so um, just as a, you know, some of the questions that I have here, um, you know, just in general, like what exactly do you at Real Orlando in the People's Free Kitchen do here? If you can explain to me. Yeah, of course. So I feel like I would love to develop further as to what is real and what's People's Free Kitchen and how they function together. So um, REAL is the Revolutionary Education and Action League here in Orlando. We're an entirely grassroots organization, fully funded by community. And at the end, we see ourselves as disenfranchised, dissolution, and also a lot of us have been disenfranchised, leftists. Um, we've been speaking on my own personal struggles with homelessness. Um, it, and we'll definitely delve into some of the historical aspect of People's Free Kitchen. Um, so our work at the end, we really want to focus on specifically making the left movement palatable to the working class. Um, we understand that a lot of folks um, feel like there is an answer out there for you know capitalism but at the end of it some folks may not feel that they know what the language that may be like what's really how can we really make the language palatable to the people that we serve so i see real as really that stronghold of the educational aspect to essentially not only the community but us as organizers being able to speak more more on our political line. Um, so letting you know we're a Marxist-Leninist organization. So, um, and our points of unity have a lot to reflect with that as well. So we are, of course, anti-imperialists. We are, of course, anti-white supremacy. Um, we function with a lot of action and accountability as well, which I will say that People's Free Kitchen, and that's where I'll say um, has, essentially helped us build discipline as 
organizers, right? How do we hold ourselves accountable to the people? Oh. And we do have to start with the work work here on the ground, right? Yeah. So what we see every day to day, it's really the gaps of the government, right? The government is not doing what it needs to do in order to take care of its people. Absolutely. So how do we start addressing those needs? And we know at the end, so now talking of people's tree kitty are the praxis arm of real. Um, so that action of real. Yeah. Um, and it is the way that we stay in touch with our community, with the people. And that's how we've learned to seek out the answers that we're looking for and what the next steps forwards are. It's really the answer is always with the people. You said the goal is 75 meals? Yes. Is it okay if I put you on? Yeah, okay. of course. So the goal is 75 meals, mm -hmm. uh, but you think that we may hit 100? Yes. We have a lot of food today. Thank you to all the volunteers and community members that have been sustaining our project. We mm -hmm. even have people that literally made tempeh from scratch. We have folks bringing taters, a mm -hmm. bunch of other sides. People make a lot of items from scratch. Okay. Um, and we have around 75 sides of each item coming in today. So we'll see how all those pin out. Um, I'm really excited. Me too. All right. Great. Thank you. So, yes. So, mm -hmm. you know, it, from, from what I've observed is that it's a teaching, not just through rhetoric, but it's also a teaching via action as well, which is something I really appreciate. Absolutely. I think we need to, at the end, that is what we always are telling our representatives, right? They're never out in the street enough. They're never actually going out into folks. So like we, Maxwell Frost. Let me not. <laughs> no, you ain't got to say that. I'm saying it. I'm Listen, saying it. We really Maxwell, you listening? All right. Whenever you're ready, you're welcome to join us. Um, and that's actually something that we'll definitely touch into as well mm -hmm. when we ended up organizing in regards of the ordinance um, that's being passed to essentially not only criminalize further homelessness, but we do believe that this in turn will affect yes. actions in the future. It's yeah. something that we are aware that at the end it starts, but it does always start. You see these laws yeah. specifically targeting homeless people mm -hmm. and then essentially they end up attacking yeah. all working class folks of course mm -hmm. and the thing is it's not about calling out it's calling in Correct. and saying look we know that you know what's going on it's like let's appeal i hate using this phrase but it's kind of like what politicians use appeal to their better angels as it mm -hmm. were and it's like you know that what's going on ain't right so let's call you in so that you you can be the best version of yourself to help the people that you pledge to do. So, you know, that's one of the reasons why I said it. I wasn't trying to be controversial. No, no. But <laughs> okay. my mouth gets me no, my mouth gets me in trouble, y'all. No, and I'll 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 share this very much so. The same folks that we've named, we've actually extended the invitation. They know where if they ever want to mm -hmm. join us to cook, to come and talk to the community. Mm -hmm. You know, they could, but that's they beautiful. choose not to. So that's something that we're deeply aware of. And at the end, we know we only have each other. We're, again, fully funded by the community. Our own, the efforts come specifically from our volunteers in our own community. Literally, we've been doing fine without them. So at the end, mm -hmm. we've been showing the power that we have. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Just, just on our own. So, beautiful answer. Thank you so very much. You, you showed me up in a good way. I appreciate. It. No, I got you. I got you. <laughs> so, besides feeding, besides feeding the unhoused, and what your, in your view, what is purpose does this serve? I think you already kind of touched on that, but what does it serve in your view? Uh, the feeding of the unhoused, for the most part. So. We, I went on my own impromptu rant earlier, um, but one of those things we're even seeing right now, the state of 
the nonprofit industrial complex right now, mm -hmm. right? There's somewhat of an idea over just in liberal head spaces, like, okay, there's a shelter over there and there's a shelter there. And that's something that I'll say in our own ordinance uh, meeting, it was brought up by Buddy Dyer that um, Orlando has, I believe, eight shelters total. The, Bud Dyer is the mayor of Orlando. Yes, Bud Dyer is the mayor of Orlando. Mm -hmm. He's serving, I believe, his fourth term. I'm not entirely sure. I know he's been in term for a couple of years now, um, but this is his apparent last term. Um, so, yes, his line was very much, well, if y'all did your research, <laughs> if you did your research and looked around, look at all the shelters that are around here, mm -hmm. the community is sure being taken care of. It only takes really you going into a shelter and engaging with the system, seeing the immense gaps in care. And that is essentially where we're starting. We're really starting at what I say is the base level, mm -hmm. which is literally quality. People deserve mm -hmm. good quality meals, mm -hmm. period. Doesn't matter. Your income doesn't matter. Your living conditions doesn't matter at all. So yeah. I will say on my own personal experiences, we in People's Free Kitchen have engaged with community members further to the point that we've gone into shelters ourselves. I myself made a line um, at one of these coalitions. Um, and after I waited an hour and a half, I went in and what I saw being served to the community was straight up slob. I cannot call it anything else. It's things that, you know, no one would eat. Yeah. So why our disenfranchised people are always given scraps? Yeah. So for me, at least for us at People's Free Kitchen, we want to make sure we have a politic of care. And that really starts at our plate, at the plate that is connecting us to the people. So, of course, if that's the only way that we're still engaging people, we want to make sure, right, that they can see that we care and we actually want to engage beyond the plate yeah. and a lot of people now recognize us in the streets and they say that's pfk let me go there real quick yeah. and grab my plate because i know it's gonna be good food because it's gonna, that, it's gonna be seasoned it's gonna be seasoned it's gonna be seasoned <laughs> so what's going on in the marinade so right now what we have going on i actually make a similar marinade here at frito mm -hmm. um which we used our like a mushroom bacon so oh with the tempeh i did Essentially, it's soy sauce with some oil, chipotle powder. Ooh. It also has oil, a bit of agave as well, to give it a bit of like a sweeter maple y flavor. Ooh. Um, so they're going to sit there for a minute um, and we'll see how they turn out. I'm really excited to experiment with oh. a new item. So they marinate for about 30 minutes, right? Yes, they're going to marinate for around 30 minutes. Okay. Um, but we'll see. Um, I might actually make them sit in like a marinade as they bake, just so they have extra flavor. Okay. So, yeah, because we are in a time crunch, we really have around three hours, which when you think about it, to crack out at least 75 meals, and today's goal is the 100 at least. Okay. So, yeah, we need to be as efficient as possible, but I also think of other ways that we could potentially make things taste even better mm. awesome all right and it's gonna matter. <laughs> that matter and that yeah. at the end is part yes of, at its core about care yeah so i will say that's really where we started and we understand that mm -hmm. right this is not where it ends we always and that was something i will say in the past could have felt very discouraging for folks like Oh, we're only making 50 meals. Yeah. Oh, we're making 60 meals. Mm -hmm. Those were 50 or 60 meals that were needed. People yeah. always ask for more and we only see more folks out in the streets. Mm -hmm. So I don't see at, at the 
as a waste. I always see it as something that is important. Mm -hmm. um, and to show the people that we are willing to do the longer fight, that we're willing to build consistency in our communities. People actually know that every Sunday we're going to show up. And that matters. It does. It matters. And it may, and that's another thing in regards to PFK and real and how we will at the end find the answers. It's really through doing the work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One of the things that uh, you guys will probably see in some of the, in some of the footage is that a lot of what's being grown in the farm for real is being utilized in this very kitchen for the neighbors here. And this goes into my next question. How long have you been cooking for our neighbors? So we started the project, it's been a year and a half now. So in 2022, mm -hmm. in August 7th, this is our very first shift. I can definitely share a bit more of the beginnings of People's Free Kitchen. Sure. So we did start as a union. Um, so we were a union of a restaurant here in Orlando. Okay. Um, so all right. I don't want to name names. Of course. Um, but it was um, it was an experience in which we struggled with another um, restaurant in the area um, because we ended up seeing that our wages were being stolen, our tips were never received on time. Um, you know, the patterns that you see of exploitation within the service industry, mm. but I will share very specifically too. In my kitchen, I was also the head chef and we did have food waste. And there are a lot of times that I was sharing with the owner, hey, are these items, can we pack them up and I'll go distribute them? A lot of the times, not a lot, Actually, let me just say it bluntly. They said no. They didn't want to essentially harbor. They straight up say they didn't want to harbor the homeless community in the restaurant. They didn't really want to. They were there to just serve vegan food to the community. And if they wanted food, they could pay, even though we were wasting so much food. Regardless. <laughs> I made sure that that food wasn't wasted anyways. I'd say, sure, and I'll just pack it up real quick, take it to Lake Yola, and food will still distribute regardless. So at its core, distributing food was always a political thing that we did in retaliation yeah. to the current system so yeah. it felt like of course the union was not going to end there yeah. it felt like the work that we wanted to continue on was to feed the community um and this is work that i had done before mm -hmm. um but i'll say from previous experiences i really wanted to build a food program it with with a marxist leninist mm. I do believe organization because mm -hmm. I've fallen into other I, anarchist groups and whatnot where at the end things end up falling apart and the work gets lost and essentially nothing ends up getting done. Yeah. So we can delve into that further later on, but I know you have other questions. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to touch the, the anarchist the anarchists uh yeah that's a battle that we're gonna have to have after the after the revolution you know what i'm saying <laughs> definitely say because i i do respect where i come from mm -hmm. the first circles that i like came into were circles that were practicing mutual aid and a lot of them had an anarchist leanings um so i do respect that Mm -hmm. um, but I understand that for the long haul, we're going to need organizational. Yes. <laughs> we're going to need organizational efforts in order to mm -hmm. really do something about our system right now. That's it. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, there's definitely a structure that's needed in order to be able to fight against this system as well. Uh, so can you give us the benefits of how this has helped you personally? Gosh. I have to, the first word that came to my mind was really revolutionary optimism. I think that, I that. that's really like, 
I, I say it to my comrades, revolutionary optimism saved me. I think that I was somebody that was really disenchanted, as I said, and I'll share personally, while I was running that restaurant, I was homeless as well. I lived out of my car. So it was very, it's one of those things that I remember being in that position and being like, if I ever get out of here, because I was devoid of community, which is what ended up really expediting my situation to homelessness. Mm -hmm. I really didn't have any form of support community or anything like that. So it ended up being a very lonely time in my life. So um, to say the least, like community saved me to be able to be in a space where we are intentionally holding care yeah. for our most disenfranchised. It was, I remember being on the other side and yeah. just wishing uh, there was a PFK out there for me. <laughs> yeah. So um, I'm just glad that I'm able to, to do this work. And that's really what fuels me every day. It's knowing that not only, of course, that's that personal thing, but I always see what this space has done and it's just create community with other people that do believe that food is a human right. And yeah. um, the United States can even get an agreement with that. So we are, we are already mm -hmm. just in that regard Food is political. Yeah. So, I mean, everything we do is political, but mm -hmm. here in this space, we've made sure to let volunteers know how political feeding folks is. Yeah, I mean, in, in, in a sense, when you think about um, how you said it saved you, it you are being the hope for humanity that you want to see, right? I'll say that, but I at the end, I feel like I am just a collection of everyone else that has been around me. Yeah, so basically, I'll, I'll say straight up. Yeah. My, the comrades at Rio. Um, so when, so again, going a little bit back on that history, mm -hmm. um, when I was unionizing my workplace, um, Rio was really the only other leftist organization here in Orlando that reached out mm -hmm. and said, how can we support you further in your union efforts? And from there, we really develop a beautiful camaraderie relationship mm -hmm. that it just de very naturally developed into a working relationship and how could we actually help each other sustain us to the next step and yeah i found community and i'm really thankful yeah see this is one of the reasons why building community is so important because then you get to you get to to do what leela does did i say it right yes i uh, to make sure i make sure i say it right you know yeah you know, we got to make sure we correct our steps. But, you know, the fact is, is that you were able to do that and it, it, it helps you to be able to help the community. That collectivism is so important. Thank you very much for that. Absolutely. What positive changes have you seen or noticed in the community since PFK started? Literally, well, some of what we touched in. Yeah. Um, I'll say we formed a really beautiful community of like people with different skill sets. Um, we have folks that are from nurses to other service industry workers yeah. that we've just coalesce in all of our efforts. And nice. at the end, I always say there's, and we all know there's everyone has a role in the revolution. So yeah. that's something that I've it. been. I've been really honing in into the space. Yeah. Everyone should feel valued yeah. in in the revolution. So mm -hmm. we're building it right now. I, I have to say that I do feel a lot of hope every time that I'm in a room, every Sunday with the energy that you see from the volunteers seeing that material mm -hmm. item that's gonna go in, out into the community. Um, it's it's worth much more than a book yeah. could do, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Amen to that. <laughs> ah. 
wonderful. You, that was actually one of my favorite questions that I wanted to ask you. <laughs> Thank you so very much for eloquently putting that, you know, so beautifully. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, so what would you say to the people who wanted to get started but just don't know how? Reach out. Reach out for help because I'll say we are not gatekeeping. Like, there's no such thing as gatekeeping a food program. Mm -hmm. If you feel like your community needs a food program, mm -hmm. start it. Don't feel like there's no help because more than likely there's people waiting, waiting for that community to be developed. Because that's essentially what happened here, here in Orlando. I'll tell you a lot of our volunteers say we just didn't have this community. There was no space being carved mm -hmm. to do this work. Mm -hmm. So it's it's one of those things that there's only so much we can like wishful think like, gosh, I wish I had this. I wish we could do this. Mm -hmm. You can. You actually can. And I'll tell you, we started with literally serving 25 meals out of our own kitchens. Wow. I remember our first plate were rice, broccoli, <laughs> We also had like a vegan protein and tangerines. Very a very simple but very filling, comforting meal. And we just build from there. At the end, you have to just start somewhere. Mm -hmm. So but also always reach for help. So we have PFK. We really just wanna encourage other people to start getting involved with the community. Because mm -hmm. you can't literally right now. So how can people help locally and where can they go to volunteer? Of course. So when it comes to us at People's Free Kitchen, um, apart from Sundays, every single Sunday, we're going to be cooking bright and early at 9 a.m. And apart from that, we'll be distributing the food ourselves after that shift ends at 12 p.m. So apart from that, we also have a full farm, the People's Freedom Farm is over in Pine Hills. And we also really prioritize first for those veggies to be for the community of Pine Hills. Um, but if, of course, there's any veggies that are not being claimed or anything like that, we'll prioritize them here at People's Free Kitchen. Um, so you do have literally Saturdays if you want to farm, Sundays if you want to cook. But we also always just have other educational forums going on, events of sorts. We'll also have the art gallery coming up. Hey. So at the end, we really just try to create as many spaces as possible to harvest community. Um, so just to plug all the things, you can go over on Instagram, freekitchen.orl. And on our link tree, you'll see all of our volunteer waivers and signups and all that good stuff. But if you literally have questions for us, you can always send us a message and we'll, we'll answer those questions for you. All right. Mm -hmm. So any final words of wisdom to impart to our audience? Get involved now <laughs> if you weren't involved do it now i then there's no such thing as being too late to the movement yeah. we'll honestly receive you with open arms all right leela so good to have this conversation with you like homie we comrades we, 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 we comrades we, we homies we that's what's good Love talking with you. Yeah. I'd love to talk to you further. Yeah. We already went on a couple rants that were not here. <laughs> look, look, look. We 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 ought to do this thing. We got to we... do a little series. Oh. I'm not mad about that. Uh, I, I ain't mad about it. Neither. Wait, wait, wait. I ain't mad about it neither. Y'all better get up on here and, 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 and tune in. Because yeah. the chefs are about to have a conversation. Mm hmm Can we cheers to that? Cheers. Cheers. Oh, holla at your boy and holla at your girl. I, I can live with that. Okay. <laughs> I got to be careful because, you know, respect. I appreciate I do use the big 
They them? Yeah. All right. But I'm, I'm How at your homie? The homies. All the right. Conference. All right. Definitely. Definitely. Thank you so very much. It was of such course. a privilege to talk to you. Thank you. I appreciate all the time you given us. Yeah. Thank you. Definitely. And it won't be the last time. It will not be the last time. Um, I'm already making plans for myself to get them early next week. I know, I know, but look, it's worth it though. It's worth it. Trust and believe. I'll make sure to still take care of y'all. I'm coming back for the muffins. I don't care what nobody says. <laughs> All right, everybody. So thank you so very much, not just to Leela, but also to Real Orlando as well as People's Free Kitchen. The link to their their socials as well as to their, their cash app is going to be in the description down below. Please make sure to, if you guys are not local, if you guys want to help out financially, then you guys can also contribute to their cash app. If in case you guys are local and by local, I mean in the central Florida area, then they can also use the assistance and volunteer work to do the work of helping out our unhoused neighbors. Remember, your community is not just people in houses. Your community is also people who are out there in the streets that have been victimized by this capitalist system, and it's not their fault that they're out there. So look, join in. Uh, hopefully, you'll, you'll see me there from time to time. And you know we can actually combine resources and powers to be able to do what we can for our community. So. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. yeah. Power to all people. Power to all people. Thank you very much, everybody. And you have yourself a wonderful day. Look, water your plants, water yourselves, leave the world better than you found it. Smoking That's the goal. Mm -hmm. Revolutionary optimism. Revolutionary optimism. <laughs> all right. Let me give you your forehead kisses. Mwah! Forehead kisses to every single one of y'all. I love you for watching. You guys have yourself a wonderful day and how are we going to close this out like we always do thank you so very much for watching my channel and i deeply appreciate it from the top and bottom of my heart if you wish to support the channel further so i can keep bringing you content that is educational and informative you can become a patron on patreon.com forward slash jbfon you can find that link in the pinned comment or in the description below no matter what you give, you'll be supporting independent media and education that helps make the world better. Thank you so much. And you can watch more of my content here. Mwah. Forehead kisses and have a beautiful day.